Hey, what's up? It's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. Now this video right here is a compilation of several videos that help make up the course that you're taking right now. Now to help you navigate through everything, I've provided timestamps down below in the description. So I recommend going, check out those timestamps, watching what's relevant to you. Let's get into it. In this section of the course, we're gonna be talking about the pixel. So what a pixel is, it's just a little snippet of code that goes on your website and it allows Google to track people as they browse your website. So to paint a full picture, you, you're gonna create an ad in Google Ads, that ad's gonna show on YouTube. Somebody's gonna watch that ad, click on the ad, go to your website, browse around, opt in for something, buy something, you know, some sort of conversion action. I mean, that's the goal behind advertising. So hopefully they, they do something and we want Google to be able to see who's opting in, who's buying things, et cetera. And that way it can, you know, report it back to us on Google Analytics and Google Ads and we can optimize our ads and all that type of stuff. So obviously it is critical for you to have your pixel on your website and set up and tracking properly. So this is a very, very important section of the course do not skip it and if it's not done correctly, make sure you ask questions so it is done correctly because without tracking, you're not gonna be able to optimize and your ads are going to fail. Also, a lot of platforms, for example, Shopify or Thrivecart and Samcart, they integrate with Google Analytics and Google Ads already. So I recommend just Googling how to install the code on whatever platform you're using because they're gonna have instructions on how to do it and it sets up like everything, all your conversion events and everything else. So it makes it really easy. And what I'm gonna show you in this course is the manual way to do it. So if you're not using a platform like Shopify, well then you can follow what I'm about to outline here. I'm also gonna show you how to set it up on WordPress as well because I'm a big fan of WordPress and a lot of people use WordPress. So we'll set it up on WordPress as well. So. Anyway, it's very important to get this right. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you two very popular ways and or there's also Google out there to help you with installing it on whatever platform you're using. And also don't hesitate to ask any questions that you might have. All right, let's go ahead and get into it and set up our, our pixel. Let's go ahead and create it. So here I am in Google Analytics and this is where we wanna start and wanna to come to tracking info and get tracking code. And right here is our pixel code for Google Analytics. So we're just gonna copy this code real quick and throw it into a, a notepad document because we gotta make some modifications to it. So what I wanna go ahead and do now is go to Google Ads and go to Tools uh, and then Settings and come down to Conversions. And there might be another better way to find this, but this is the way I know how to find what I'm looking for. So this is the way we're gonna go through it. We'll add a new conversion. We're just gonna do website real quick. And it doesn't matter, you can just select whatever, uh, just begin checkout and so on, and create and continue. Oh, you need to select a value apparently. So select a value, create and continue, and then install the tag yourself. And then I wanna come down here and I wanna select this option right here. The global site tag is already installed on all pages, but comes from a new, another Google product such as Google Analytics. So that's what we've got right here, right? We've got a Google Analytics code, so we got that. And so it gives us our options down here. So copy the config command below and add it to every instance of the global site tag right above the ending script tag. Uh, consider updating the comment line. Okay, cool. So let's grab this little snippet of code and then we have our a Google Analytics pixel code, and we'll just paste this in here. So basically what we did was we made a super pixel that includes both your Google Analytics tracking as well as your Google Ads tracking. So you have both platforms in one simple clean pixel, and we can go ahead and add a comment here. So we'll just call this Google Analytics and Google, Google Ads. So there we go. We have now created our pixel and we're gonna install it and do some other stuff with it later on, but I just we just wanted to get both analytics and ads in the same exact pixel. So there we go. And now I can go ahead and get out of this thing. I don't need this conversion. And we'll go ahead and just delete it. I just needed that little snippet of code. Again, there might be an easier way to find it, but I know that finding it that way works. And so that's it for this video. We do have more pixel stuff to come, so stand by. 
Hey, I hope you're enjoying the training. Real quick, I have a special offer that I want to present to you where you can get a digital copy of my book as well as an audio copy. Plus, I'm giving away 20 pre-written emails that make your email writing a piece of cake. And finally, I have a seven-figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures for a small business, and it includes training on how to actually set up the funnel. If you're interested in that, plus several other bonuses, link in the description down below, or there'll be a link in the little box up above here. So if you're interested, check it out. Back to the training. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up cross-domain tracking, which may or may not be applicable to you, but if it is applicable to you, then it's very important that you get this right. And now what cross-domain tracking is, is so I have my website, right? I have crazyonmarketing.com right here, and my shopping cart platform is on Thrivecart. So if somebody clicks that button, and then they're brought over to cemllc.thrivecart.com instead of you know crazyonmarketing.com. But it's the same person, right? It's person going from crazyoutmarketing.com to this domain right here, the thrivecart.com domain. And I wanna track that same person from one domain to the other domain, hence cross domain tracking, right? So if you have different websites or properties or shopping carts or whatever that are connected together, then you wanna make sure that you go ahead and you set up this cross domain tracking that we're gonna do in this video. So let's go ahead and do it. So. I have this little article over here that breaks down how to, what it does and all that type of stuff. And it's kind of complicated if you just look at it and or aren't familiar with it, like they use some keywords and stuff, but I'll show you how, how to make it work, and what, which is the impor important part, right? So right here we have this little snippet of code and this is what we want to go ahead and grab. I want to grab this part down to here. And then I'll look at my code here and I'll try and line them up so we can look at it all together. All right, so what it's saying is I need to modify my Google Analytics tag or code to match what I have right there. So let me go right here and paste it on in there. All right, so now I've modified it a little bit and now I can go ahead and add in any domains that are, are linked together. So I got crazyimarketing.com and then I throw a comma in there, an apostrophe, and then I have semlc.thrivecart.com. And you don't need like the www. or the HTTPS or anything like that. Just throw in what you have there. Make sure you have that apostrophe. I also have secure.crazyimarketing.com. And you can throw as many as you want in here. There's no limit that I know of for the number of domains you can link together. Now, one thing to note, if you're adding these apostrophes here, make sure you're doing it inside of a plain text editor like Notepad here. I've had people do it in Word and Word generates like a, a weird apostrophe that has like a curve in it and that will break your code. So if you're having issues with your, your tags, it's probably because your, your apostrophes aren't correct. You wanna use a plain text editor when you're adding your code, like Notepad. Do not edit your code in Microsoft Word because it's gonna mess things up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the spacing a little bit, make it neater or whatever. And all right, cool, I'm happy with my code now. Now there's one more step I have to do over in Google Analytics to, to do this cross-domain tracking. So let's go back to Google Analytics. And what I wanna go to is referral exclusion list, which is under the property setting. So under property here, we have referral exclusion list, and what we wanna go ahead and do is add in all the domains that we're cross-linking together. So add referral exclusion. So I've got uh, semllc.thrivecart.com and create. And then add another one. And I got secure.crazyimarketing.com and create. And so there we go. I've added my, my three domains that I'm cross-linking together, and that's pretty much it. You just add this little snippet to your, your tag, and then you add your domains to the referral exclusion list, and then your code should be good to go. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up a custom filter on our Google Analytics view, uh, so that way we can show the full URL in our Google Analytics reports. Now, this is really only important if you're doing cross-domain tracking. If you're not doing cross-domain tracking, you probably don't need to set this up. Um, but anyway, if you're doing cross-domain tracking, this is pretty critical. So how Google works, or Google Analytics works out of the box is, uh, it only shows you like the page path people are on, so like, for example, if somebody went to this website right here, uh, Google Analytics would only report this tail end. So it wouldn't give you the domain they're on. So if you have multiple domains and multiple page paths, then it could be kind of confusing as to which uh, 
domain somebody is on because all you're seeing is the page path. So by setting up this filter, we'll see the entire, the domain and the page path in our reports and it'll just make things a lot easier to keep track of. So let's go ahead and set it up. Go to Google Analytics real quick and we need to go back to our views. So we wanna to go to our view and I'm editing my master view so make sure you're on the correct view. And we'll go to filters now and we're gonna go ahead and add a filter and we're gonna follow the steps that they outlined for us. So they made it easy. So full domain and that's good enough. And let's see, full domain and we got filter type, custom filter advanced. So custom and then advanced, okay. And then we have field A host name is this right here. Host name, host name is this right here. And then request URI, I think that's URI. URI is this, request URI is this right here. And then output to request URI is this combination right here. Request URI, this. And then we leave these other options alone and we just hit save. And there we go. We will now see the full domain and page path in our reports, which makes things a lot easier to keep track of, especially when you're doing cross domain tracking. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and install our pixel code onto a ClickFunnels funnel. So let's just get into it. So go to your funnel and then go up to your funnel level settings, which is the settings button in the blue area. And then what we need to go ahead and do is paste our code in the head tracking code area. I got a bunch of codes already running on here, but I'll go ahead and paste this code in here as well. So just grab your snippet of code and I'll drop it on in here and then scroll on down and save and update settings. And boom, just like that, the your pixel has been installed across all the pages on your funnel and that, that's it. That's it for this video, pretty simple setup. In this video, I'm gonna talk about installing the pixel code on a WordPress website. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do it and I'm gonna show you two different ways in this video. So let's get into it. Uh, the first way is to just grab your pixel code and add it to the header of your website. Now you can go ahead and edit your theme and edit the header and add the code like that, like hard coded in, or you can get a plugin, like I use Tracking Code Manager, and you can go ahead and get the plugin, and then you just paste your code in here, and you know you make sure it appears in the head of your web website, so before the closing head tag, and then you select whatever relevant options and save, and boom, just like that, your, your pixel is installed on your website. Now, th this next method is the method that I use and the one that I recommend uh, over this, this first method. Uh, and that's by using a plugin. I use Pixel Your Site, and there's a free version and there's also a paid version. I have the paid version, and so I'm gonna show you that because that's what I have. Uh, I'm not sure what the differences are, but I believe you can do most everything with the free version. So anyway, it's Pixel Your Site. I'll include a link in the course notes to it. Uh, you can read more about it. Um, and here's the, the advanced or the paid version of it. And also, real quick, if you Come to the website, come to it on a computer, and then there's an exit intent pop-up. It's not popping up now because I think I triggered it before, but it'll let you save $50 um, on, on the paid plan. So if you are upgrading to the paid plan, use a computer, do exit intent, so move your mouse off the screen, and it'll pop up how to save $50. So anyway, let's get into actually setting it up. So here I am, once you've installed Pixel Your Site on your WordPress website, you can go ahead and configure it. So it's pretty simple uh, to understand. So we grab our Google Analytics tracking ID. So we know where that is, right? So come over here, tracking info, tracking code, and it's right here. So you grab that snippet and you throw it in your right here. And then for your Google Ads tag, you can just come over to your code and just grab this little snippet right here, copy and paste it over here. And again, we created this by coming into Google Ads and creating a conversion event and getting the snippet that way. Uh, so if you haven't, if you didn't, if you skipped that section, go watch that video on how to how to actually get your Google Ads ID. And let's come back over to Pixel Your Site and scroll down here. And so there's a bunch of different uh, global event options. I recommend turning pretty much everything on. So you have your general events, you have your track searches and forms and all of this stuff. Basically, 
Anytime somebody does something on your WordPress website, it's gonna push that information into Google Analytics and Google Ads, and we can set up different goals and objectives and things like that uh, later on. But the point is we're pushing the information into the platform so we can do something with it. So I recommend coming through here and turn on all the type of tracking and everything, get it, get all, all events happening here. And under global settings here, make sure you have track UTMs and track traffic source as well, uh, because that's important when we're running ads. And then of course hit save settings and then come back up to the top here. And we want to go to Google Analytics settings real quick. Uh, so you want to go ahead and enable Google Analytics probably, and otherwise it's not going to work. And then you also want to enable enhanced link attribution, might as well. Uh, you could anonymize IP if you want to. It depends on like your location and your privacy policy and all that type of stuff of how you want to handle that. Uh, Google Optimize, you can turn it on if you're using Google Optimize or you can leave it turned off if you're not. And then cross-domain tracking. So if you are doing cross-domain tracking, that's this is where you go ahead and set that up. So we did that previously manually, uh, but if you're using this plugin, you can just go ahead and turn it on and you just throw in whatever uh, domains you're connecting and Again, save settings and boom, just like that, you're good to go. Same concept over here with Google Ad settings. So come over here, make sure it is turned on as well and save settings. And that's pretty much it for setting up the pixel on your WordPress website. Again, I recommend using this plugin because it sends a bunch of information. And in a later on video, we're gonna set up some events as well. So you'll see how that works. So you could track likes leads and purchases and things like that. So it's a great tool, a great plugin, and it gives you more options than just copying and pasting this code into the header of your website. In this video, we're gonna quickly talk about Google Tag Assistant, which is a little Chrome extension that lets you validate that your Pixel has been properly installed on your website. So I'll include a link to it in the course notes, but it's just Tag Assistant and create, adds a little add-on to your Chrome browser. And basically you go to your website then and you click on it and you see what is going on. So you notice that there's different colors here. So there's green and then there's blue. So green and blue are both good. That means things are working. If you see red, it's not working. Uh, if you don't see it at all, it's definitely not working. Something's really messed up. And then there's also yellow. And that means like something is likely broken, but it might work sometimes. So you want green or blue. If you don't have green or blue, then you, you got something wrong with your code. Or if you don't have it code, then you definitely have something wrong. So anyway, what you wanna do is just make sure that your your codes are set up. So here's my, my Google Analytics number, right? Uh, let's see, ID, so 31, so 831-1. So that looks like it, Google Analytics. And I can scroll up. And I got my global site tag 831-1, so that's working too. And then also my Google Ads remarketing tag. So let's see, it's 3768, 3768. It's blue, so appears to be working. And I have a lot of different codes on this funnel because I've done a lot of different tests and whatnot and haven't deleted codes. So you, yours won't look as crowded probably as mine, but the key thing is to make sure things are green or blue and the right numbers are popping up like you think they should be. Uh, same concept on like a WordPress website. So you come to your WordPress website, you click on it and make sure your tags are properly set up and all that type of stuff. So anyway, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you the Google Tag Assistant. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed the training. Now I have a quick special offer for you. So if you want a digital copy as well as an audio copy of my book here, as well as 20 pre-written emails to make your email copywriting a piece of cake. And I also have a seven figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures of revenue for a small business. And the funnel includes a course on how to set it up and also how to actually sell that funnel to small businesses. So if you're interested in starting a digital marketing agency, that course and that funnel are, are an ideal option for you and there's a bunch of other benefits and stuff bonuses and stuff anyway link in the description down below or there's going to be a little button probably up here in the video if you're interested in checking it out yeah just just check it out if you're interested um and other than that i hope you have a great rest of the day